In this demonstration, we are going to show you that how to run our first Scala application or the Scala program on our system. So, here is the demonstration for you. Here we shall create one Scala uh, project and then under the Scala project we shall create one Scala object and then we shall show you that how to execute that one. So going for this file and then new and then Scala project. So here we are using the Eclipse ID. So going for the name as first program. So Java AC 1.8 is selected here going for finish. Under this one going for this SRC and here we are going for this new and Scala object. From this Scala object also you can select Scala class, Scala trait, an object and so on. Giving this name as test my class 1. Giving this name as test my class 1. Now going for, going for finish. The respective object has got created. Now going for main control space and here we are creating the main function so def means define function so here we are having this define main and then we are having this args add a string so it is prepared to take the command line input arguments and this output argument is unit that is void is equal to and then the respective function body so here we have defined that is a def that is a define min. So now here we are writing one statement that is a print ln. Semicolon is optional here so that's why I didn't give any semicolon here. So print ln I am here. So now I shall go for its compilation and execution. So going for here there is a run test my class one dot scala building is taking place and execution has been done so I am here so now it has got printed so now here you see I'm writing another line that is print ln going for the execution so I'm also here so in case of Scala the comment line can be single line comment can be done using double slash in this way so this is a comment line so you see if I execute this one that line will not be executed because it is a comment line it is required for the documentation so that's why you see there is no error is there otherwise you can go for this this block comment also so in in our program let, let, let us discuss some terminologies we, we shall discuss object what is object then we shall discuss a class then we shall discuss this method methods then fields and then we shall discuss a closer and then we shall discuss say traits okay in our first program in Scala let us discuss these terminologies so objects have states and behaviors an object is an instance of a class an example we can consider that dog has the states that is the uh, color name breed as well as the behaviors that is wagging and then barking and eating and so on so in this way you can define one object so object has the states and the respective behaviors An instantiation of a class will produce an object instantiation means some memory space will get allocated in the computer's primary memory that is the instantiation of a class is known as an object so now let us discuss the term that is a class so what is a class a class can be defined as a template or blueprint that describes the behavior and states that object of its type support so that is then known as a class now what is the methods so now methods a method is basically a behavior a class can contain many methods it is a, it is in methods where the logics are written and the respective business logic will be written there and data is manipulated and all the actions are executed in the methods now let, let us discuss what is a field so each object has its unique set of instant uh, variables and which are known as the fields An object's state is created by the values assigned to these respective fields so now let us uh, discuss this closer 
So a closure is a function whose return value depends on the value of one or more variables declared outside this function. And regarding this closure and trades, we will be having the separate videos for the detailed discussion with the proper examples. And what is a trait? So a trait encapsulates method and field definitions which can then be reused by mixing them into classes. And traits are used to define object types by specifying the signature of the supported methods. And that is known as the traits. So actually trait is nothing but it encapsulates the methods and the field definitions and which can then be reused by mixing them into the classes. And that is a special feature available in Scala known as traits. So now I have written this program. Now let me execute this same code uh, in, in our prompt that is in our Scala prompt. So I'm just going for this prompt here. So this is a prompt here. So see I have pre-written one um, uh, Scala program. So let me open this one at first. So I have opened this one in our notepad. You can easily see the file has got opened and here you see so this is the respective file we are having here. So there is a file we are having. There is the my test my class one. So here you see this is the respective path we are having. That is the path is d colon Scala. So under this particular path, this Scala program is ex existing, and this is the respective code here. And also I have entered in this d colon Scala path. So in this path I have entered. Now I shall compile this code and I shall run it. So at first I'm executing this Scala command. You see the Scala can also be treated as an interpreter. So here you see I've written Scala, not Scala C, not like your Java C, but here it is something like your Java that is a virtual machine. So now here we have used this Scala and then typing the file name. So now you see this is a Scala test my class one dot Scala. If I execute, I'm here, it is getting printed. Now here you see, if we execute the same without this respective extension, it is showing me some error because the respective bytecode file is not present. So what we shall do, we shall go for Scala C and here in this particular folder, you can find that the compiled version will create the class file which is written in bytecode. So this, this is the respective bytecode file. So now if I execute this one, the code will get executed. So I think you are getting this idea that how this color can be treated as an interpreter and also as a bytecode executor. So now you're getting this idea. Now let me do one experiment with it. I shall change the name of the file. So I'm making this one set test my class one. I'm also making once I'm making a small change. You see the file name is still same. That is a test my class one. Here I've written this test with the lower case. I my class once I've made that one here in this case. So now what will happen? Uh, let me execute the code. Let me see that whether it is producing any error message or not. Or whether the code is getting executed yes the code is executing exactly I'm just doing some changes so that you can get the updated one so so that you can confirm that yes really this particular code is getting executed yes it is getting executed accordingly now let me do the same let me do the same here also so here I'm I'm just making this one as T here and then once here you see the file name is still with the test my class one but here I've done some experiments here I'm going for this save and now now I shall go for the so at first I shall go for this is a Scala my test my class one dot Scala so you see the code is getting executed but if I do this one, if I go for the Scala C, you see the bytecodes are getting created. 
Now if I execute the same, so no such file or class on class path that is test my class one. So it requires the file name and the respective object name or the class name same. So now let me uh, do the corrections here. I'm making this one capital letter, this one, I'm making this one this and then I'm putting another two dots here, going for this save, deleting these two files, keeping the source file only and then I'm going for the execution. So at first I'm compiling to create the bytecode files. You see the bytecode files I've got created and now I shall go for the execution. The program is executing fine. So in this way I've shown you that how this program can be executed in the in the uh, respective command uh, window and also using the Eclipse editor. Thanks for watching this video.